Thank you for these good words. Um, <clears throat> thank you all, having stayed so long. Um, I think the saturation point is almost there. It is not your fault, it's biological. Um, so I'm going to be uh, as short as possible and not to bring you too much new information because also there our brain is limited. But uh, as I've learned with my staff and also with other occasions, uh, sometimes repetition is very important. Communication, 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 so that it gets true. Um, I am not standing here because I have the truth. I think one of the lessons of these two days, as a colleague said, there are many roads that lead to Rome. And uh, I think that is important to stress. I hope uh, to be a little bit clever as our speaker at the end of, of yesterday. I will have uh, three points and three concluding remarks so you can do a countdown how long your suffering will continue. Um, so the question of the role of foundations, um, it seems clear uh, that anyhow in our sector at least there is a consensus that in every society uh, a foundation is positioning itself between the corporate sector, the state and the civil society and that we are in there. And the way it, it translates itself is, of course, different in every continent and, and also in Europe, in every country. But there seems to be a consensus simply by the matter of figures and facts that we cannot replace the state and that it is not our job, especially not in the re redistribution function. I'm not sure that all that the political world everywhere in Europe or in Greece has understood that, and I'm not sure even that some of the NGO sectors have understood that or the churches have understood that. Um, I think this is a reality and it is our job as a sector to communicate that and repeat that, although it's perhaps not a very popular one. I think the key for the future that has been repeatedly said, but also it has to get through in the practice and not in the talking, but in the doing, is that we will live in a different world and that everything is changing. So it's also a reason why not simply to, play, to, play, to, to take the role of the government. It is not something, a crisis is not something like a pause in a, in a, in a process. We just stop for some years, we have a crisis, and then we continue like before. Some people seem to think that, but we will live in a different world, so we will have to adapt. So I think the conclusion is clear, our role is not to fill the gap. What is our role? And I'm just going to, well, our role is, I think, and that has been also in the, former, uh, in the panel today, our role is short term and long term. And I think it has to be both. Um, and as our Spanish colleague always said, it's a, also said, it is a balance. The short term, to work in certain niches, to go for short term needs, but to try to do it in a different way. But at the same time, the foundation is in its unique position as being independent, can look at the long term and can be agenda setters and can create, which was said on the first day, I think, a public sphere for dialogue, as we have done here today, thanks to the foundation and the EFC. Uh, there are words which repeatedly came back, like facilitators, connectors, knowledge brokers, uh, we, I think if we speak about these connectors and, and facilitators, we can also not stress enough our role as connectors between different sectors, as I already said, but also I think on different institutional levels. We can connect the local with the federal, with the European and back. And I think that's also an evolution which you see in a lot of foundations in Europe, is that they understand that working simply on the national level on certain issues doesn't make a lot of sense because as we, and as you unfortunately experience, more than 60 or 7 percent, 70 percent of what our national parliaments are doing is implementing what is decided in the, con in the town where I live, Brussels, where I work, but to be more correct. Um, so how, how can we play this role? Um, and, and that's also, I, and, and it's also been said by, by my colleague before, 
things are in evolution and before, and that's also a message we have to continue to spread outward, outwards, foundations are not longer only about grants. Foundations have a toolbox with different methods in it. And that's our strength if you want to go for impact. Um, so we are, and we are really, really advantaged in Europe that we are not in a legal box like in our US colleagues where we can combine grant giving with operational work. This is a, gr a great asset we have, and which we have to use as much as possible, I think. On the grant side, of course, there are always also innovations. I think we have been doing a lot of individual grants and project grants. I think what, so what Mark has also pointed out, venture philanthropy um, also brings another tool to it, I think, is that we support organizations in their structural evolution. We work with them during two, three years. We give them consultancy, we give them some money, or we give loans, and we help them to reposition themselves to change their business model. And I think that is very valuable these days because the NGO sector, as us, and as the private sector, and all, everybody has to adapt to those new models. And I think venture is a very interesting new granting way to do it. It's also still a grant because a lot of people think that venture philanthropy is investment. But in the facts, more than 90% of venture philanthropy is simply grants. We do research. We convene. It has been so many. I'm not going to repeat to the examples which are there, but they were clear. We, we, we convene for public benefit. We advocate even. We communicate. We reframe. We partner. We partner between ourselves more and more, as also my predecessor said, also between the different sectors. And, and that, honestly, five years ago was less obvious. We understand that we are nothing alone, and that we are doing, as a foundation, not very much, but bringing things together and, and achieving things together, and not on our own, and so it's not all, all our credit. Now, the question which was, was raised, uh, if you do all that, what is the danger of power, and, and how do you going to look at it? It's clear that it is a challenge. and, and um, you can only, the condition to do this work in this way is that you work in a certain ethos, that you work for public benefit, that you are a good citizen, that you are transparent, clear, and accountable, um, so that you create trust. The session yesterday was about brand name, and what was brand name was managing your reputation. And it is key because often when we interview our grantees and we ask them, what is your added value? What have we helped we, 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 you with? It's not only the money, it's our reputation which gives them the possibility that private people trust you as an NGO, that public authorities trust you. So our reputation has an enormous value. And, and it has more often sometimes than an endowment, if I exaggerate a little bit, but it, I think it's, there is something in it. So the trust and the brand name are key. But to do this work, Essentially, we need to be very good stakeholder managers, which is a buzzy word, but it's true. We have, on every project we work, to bring together the people who are key on that subject. People from the public sector, from the private sector, from the NGO side, grassroots and others. And, I mean, I'm not here to speak about the King Goldwine Foundation, but I just want to say this. With all our selection committees and juries and expert groups and, and, and whatever, we have different formula. Every year we have 1,900 individuals who give their time in these groups for free. I think that's another secret. It's not only our brand name, it's again not our money. It's people who give their time and their expertise on a subject to us. Uh, because that is also the truth, is that foundations don't have the solution. We can say that is the problem, but the moment that the foundation as an organization or as a boss of an organization says that it has to be like that, then I think we're going to run into trouble. We can only do that if the st stakeholder group of everybody involved comes to a consensus, then we can advocate, then we can go and plead for it, but not as an individual foundation or foundation leader. Um, the third element to be credible and a condition to do that work, I think, and it has been referenced also, is that we have to do ourselves what we impose to the others, meaning measure, meaning KPIs, meaning evaluate. I mean, we are very tough with NGOs, but I see a lot of 
colleagues and sometimes in my own foundation colleagues who try to avoid to be tough on ourselves. And I think that's also a question of credibility, is that you do what you impose to others. I have uh, three intuitions. I wouldn't like to call it advice because, as Rui has said, we have to be very humble and we just arrive here and don't know the context very much. But I have the impression that, that in Greece there is really a need for a civil society observation and support center or something like that. I'm just calling it. I mean, um, I think there is a need to have a kind of a website of uh, like in, in the US and we have one in Belgium on a type of guide star, what, what NGOs are there, what is their mission, what is their financial situation, who is on the board. You can do surveys on the NGO sector to ask them what are your difficulties, that you can do training, training on also very financial management, we did that, IT and all those things, to work on volunteering. I think the sector of civil society is not the only sector which foundations work with, as, which has been said. We work with, with governments, we work with private sector, but the civil society also. And I think they need reinforcement here. Second intuition, I, I, I'm really struck by the extreme opportunity which is there with the cultural center. And, and when I heard yesterday what you are doing to prepare that with the library, and I heard the opera, it's really impressive, I think. Um, but I, I, I think there's more possible even, uh, in the sense that to dare to bridge also their non-profit and profit even. I think, not to refer necessarily to Berlin, but to, to other places, I think artists and IT people are creating uh, an atmosphere of new uh, businesses, new enterprises, entrepreneurial spirits, and perhaps the center can also try to bridge that and also try to, to help that. And I would really hope that you can uh, reflect and, and continue to discuss with the government, not to just give it to the government, but to continue in a type of a public-private partnership. Of course, also giving responsibility, but seeing that it, it goes well for the future. The third intuition, and, and I didn't hear that till my predecessor here, uh, is that I think there is a huge opportunity uh, for European money, uh, which the foundations can help to bring here. Because, and I'm not, it's not my opinion, I'm almost quoting people in the Commission. There is 80 billion lying for Greece in Brussels. And of course, it's not all on. On, on, on things which the foundations are working on. It's also, it's also on infrastructure work, but there's a lot of money like that. There is the impression, it's not my opinion, that the Greek people on its own are not capable to write good projects and to implement them. That's what is brutally said. It's perhaps a scandal, but that's what's, what the belief which is there. And the scandal is, I think we should work against that. And I think foundations can be also their catalyzer, facilitators, uh, brought even together with other foundations or other to try to bring this money which is needed for everybody into the into the country. But this, again, I said this is not a, it's, it's intuitions I, I have more than anything else. So these were my three points. The three concluding uh, reflections uh, will be much shorter. So uh, I just want to to share with you at the end uh, what is my my light motif, as they say in German, my my guidelines when I. I, I, I dialogue with my staff. Um, and I think one of the things which some of my colleagues have already heard, but I think we need to have much less pretension and much more ambition. And it doesn't help, of course, and I understand the NGOs who thank 25 times the foundation for what they do, but it's very dangerous for us. Because we think we are great. Because everybody who gives, gets money, of course, will say that you are great. So it's a vain, dangerous thing to be always in a situation that people thank you. Um, so, and some of the staff, I'm now speaking my own staff, I don't uh, speak about anybody in the room, uh, get pretentious because of that. And, and you really have to fight against that. We have to stay humble and, um, and, and, and be very ambitious on, on the few things we can do, but very, be very tough on that. The second thing, uh, and I think there EFC, I hope, has shown that this is possible, and anyhow for my foundation it has been extremely helpful. Um, stay open to the world, learn and steal. 
I mean, it's not something you say to a foundation with an adolescent, but uh, I think stealing is how you get forward. You need to pick, take all the ideas in, in the world of foundations you find and try to, to adapt them to your situation uh, permanently and imitate. I think it's a word, we speak a lot about innovation. I think that, uh, and it was a, an article two years ago in, in Harvard, I think, imitation is even more important sometimes than innovation. Take something somewhere else, don't copy it, but imitate it, adapt it, bricolage, <laughs> adapt it to your system and, and apply it. And finally, I think um, it's also something which a message we have to go to the outward, outside world, to the NGO sector, to everybody, but also inside. We need to understand our, our foundations have to change permanently. They have to change permanently. We cannot be happy when we have just done a restructuring or a change. My opinion is, and my staff knows that, you have to change permanently, and I change them. I mean, we, they don't have an office anymore, so that's easy. But uh, I, I oblige them to clean everything they have every two, three years. Otherwise, they, they have to change their minds, and they have to be in a setting of permanent change. So thank you for the invitation, and thank you all, and courage for the future. Thank you.